Using the three basic principles, that is the root word, prefixes and suffixes, we named these two compounds as chlorobutanoic acid. But I know that these two compounds are not the same. Because here the chlorine is attached to this carbon and here the chlorine is attached to this carbon. Now the name doesn't show any difference. It's, it says that both are chlorobutanoic acid. Now how do I show the difference in their names? So if I somehow specify the position of chlorine to which carbon it is attached, then maybe I can you know differentiate between these two compounds. So maybe if I tell this chlorine is attached to some second carbon and this chlorine is attached to third carbon, then I'll be able to differentiate between them. Now the question is, how do I even specify the number? One immediate thing comes to my mind is to number the carbon atoms. Now how do I number it? Should I start numbering from this carbon to this carbon? Or this carbon to this carbon? Or should I start somewhere from the middle? Or should I number it randomly? So in this video, we would be learning how to number the carbon atom in a given compound. So about these two compounds, we would be able to name after a couple of videos because we are going to learn the rules for numbering here and we would be able to name these two compounds later on. Let's see how we can number the carbon atoms by knowing few rules. So the first rule we have is to find out the longest carbon chain in a given compound. We have already learned this in the video of root word where we used to count the total number of carbon atoms in a parent chain if you remember. But one thing we are going to do over here is we, no we also number the carbon atoms. So the first rule is the longest chain rule. Let's find out the longest chain in these compounds. So in the first compound, you can see that this is present in a straight chain. So this itself is the longest chain, right? So you, what we used to do earlier is we used to count like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we used to name it. But in this, we are going to add another step that is to number the carbon atoms. Now the question is, how do we number it? Can I start from between? No, never. Whenever we are numbering the carbon atoms, we can start from the corners. Either we can start from this corner to this corner or we can start from this corner to this corner. You know what? Let's do both and try. So if I number from this corner to this corner, it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbon chain, root word is pent, all our carbon carbon single bond, suffix used is a. Yes, this is pentane. Now what if I number from this corner to this corner and it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again it's a 5 carbon chain, all our carbon carbon single bond, the name will be pentane itself. That means if we have a single chain like this without any substituent group or the functional group, a simple alkane, then you can number it from either sides. Like you can go from left to right or right to left. Suppose a compound is in a straight chain like this, then top to bottom or bottom to top, you can number it anyhow. Let's move to the second one. Here I can see that one of the group is hanging. That means it's not a simple chain like this. There is branching also happening, right? So how do I number it? So first thing, we know that the first rule, we have to choose the longest carbon chain. So what is it? If I count from here, then it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, I have a 5 carbon chain here. If I count from here again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I consider this, this is also a 5 carbon chain. What if I consider this? This is 1, 2, 3. See, 3 is a shorter chain. We got 2 5 carbon chain. So let's number the carbon. I'm going to consider this long chain. Okay, so this becomes 1. 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember, I have to uh, number the carbon atoms in a chain only. So I can't put 6 over here. So that would be wrong. So this from 5 to 6, if I'm jumping, that won't, this won't be a chain. This is not connected to this carbon. So it won't be a chain. We have studied in the earlier video, CH3 is used as prefix and its name is methyl, if you remember. Or you can pronounce it methyl. We used to name it as methyl. Give the root word. 5 carbon chain, therefore it is pent, all our carbon carbon single bond, it's in. This is how we used to name it earlier. Here I am going to add another step that is to specify the position of this methyl group. So this methyl group is attached to the fourth position, therefore I am going to add 4 here, or write 4 here and put a hyphen indicating that this methyl group is attached to the fourth carbon. Now what if I number it other way from here to here? This becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Now we can see that this CH3 is attached to the second carbon, like, like this, okay. Now it is attached to the second carbon. So instead of 4, now I am going to write 2 because CH3 is attached to the second position, methyl and pentane. This remains the same. Okay, so I am having two names whereas in the first compound we found that however you number it you are getting the same name. That means we have to do something over here. We can't have, I mean one compound cannot have two names. To avoid this, we introduced another rule which states that if you have a functional group or the substituent group present in the compound, then these groups like functional group and methyl group, they should get the lowest number. Now what I mean by lowest number is, in these two names, we can see 2 is lower than 4. That means the position 2 is the lowest number compared to the position 4. Therefore, this naming is correct, not this. We don't consider this. Now, why did we choose lowest number? We could have choose longest number also, right? So, right now I can say that by choosing lowest number, the nomenclature became much easier. So, how? Let's find out in the other examples. Okay, now while naming the third one, we have to keep it in mind two rules because again, this is not just a simple chain. There is a substituted compound over here, right? So we have to keep two things in mind. One thing is to choose the longest carbon chain. Second thing is to give the lowest number for the substituent group or the functional group present. So here I encourage you to pause the video and do it by yourself first, then we will solve it. Now if you have tried, first we choose the longest chain. Let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I got a 4 carbon chain. Here if I count 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this is also a 4 carbon chain. What about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Oh, I got a 5 carbon chain. So this chain is a 5 carbon chain. That is the longest chain. So never think that it should be always present horizontally or vertically. It can be existing in any chain. Only criteria we have to follow is it should be connected and it should be long. So now our chain is this, right? This is our 5 carbon chain. Let's number it. So we can go from one corner to another corner. This becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. So if I go from this corner to this corner, this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, CH3 again is a substituent group attached here. If I go from here to here or, you know, here to here, the position of the CH3 remains the same. That means it, we can number it from any direction. All right. With that, let's name this. First, we give the prefix CH3. It is attached to the third position. Therefore, this is 3. We put a hyphen and then we name this methyl. Now, it's a 5 carbon chain. Therefore, it is pent and all our carbon carbon single bond is in 3 methyl pentane. In the last one, if I have to choose the longest chain, I can see that this itself is the longest chain. Now the question is how do we number it? Here we have the functional group CHO attached. So either we can go from this corner to this corner or this corner to this corner. Let's do both again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I come from right to left, this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's name both the ways. In the first one, okay, I don't have any prefix. So let's start with the root word. Therefore, it becomes pent, 5 carbon, all our carbon carbon single bond, AN, ANE. Now, since this CHO is a functional group, so we used to remove the last letter E and fix all, right? We used to call it pentanol. But here, I am going to introduce one more step that is to specify the position of carbon of the functional group. So, if I go from left to right, I can see that it is, at, it is present in the fifth carbon. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hyphen indicating that it is attached and the position 5 and what is attached in position, what is the functional group present in the position 5? It is aldehyde. Okay, let's see what happens if I number it other way around. Then this becomes pent, 5 carbon chain, in because all are carbon carbon single bond. Now the functional group is present in the first carbon. So it is becoming pentane 1 all. All right, I have two names now. Now, how do I choose which is the right one? So let's go for the rule number two, right? Lowest number. Now, here, if you consider pentane 5 all and 1 all, we know that 
1 is the lowest so we we name this compound as pentane 1 all not pentane 5 all so one note over here is whenever the position is number 1 like whenever we have the first position we usually neglect that position and directly we write it as pentane all like this okay so if we don't write the position that means we assume that it is attached to the first position so this is why we chose the lowest number now if you consider organic compounds most of them will have the functional group and if you have to uh, you know if you have to give the highest position to the functional groups then every time you have to end it with 5-al or 10-oic acid or 52-oic acid or 23-oic acid because we don't know how many carbon atoms will be there. But if we give the first position we can neglect that one writing one and we can just write it pentanol. So that is why we chose the lowest number than choosing the highest number. Now what if we have both prefix and suffix attached in the same compound how do we name it? Let's find out about this in the next video.